Today, i-share ko po sa inyo yung mga natutunan ko about co-ownership based from my experience as more than 4 years na pong sales agent dito kay First. Hello po mga ka-first! For those of you who don't know me yet, my name is Romina. I make vlogs po about real estate, particularly about First. And for today's episode, dahatiin po natin yung vlog into three parts. First, we'll dissect muna ano bang ibig sabihin ng co-ownership and why do people choose to add co-buyers. Second, we'll talk about the implications and mga possible impact sa yo and sa property mo kapag nag-add ka ng co-buyer. Third, um, we will talk about din yung mga risks involved in co-owning a property. Ano yung mga dapat mong matandaan before you choose a co-buyer. Okay, let's go! <laughs> Okay, first, let's define po muna ano bang ibig sabihin ng co-ownership. Basically, guys, it means joint ownership or shared ownership over a real estate property. Yun. <laughs> yun na yun. Pwede yun na pong hindi tapusin yung vlog. <laughs> It's actually very straightforward. Dalawa kayong may-ari ng property, dalawa kayong nasa title, and dalawa rin kayong kailangan magkasundo kapag gusto nyo na pong ibenta yung property nyo in the future. More on this later. Why do people do it? Madami pong reasons. Pwedeng for business purposes, meaning partnership. For example, ikaw at saka yung best friend mo, bumili kayo ng property. Since dalawa po kayong naglabas ng pera, nagkasundo kayo na dalawa rin kayong nasa title. So kung ano man po yung kitain ng property nyo later on, for example, nirisale nyo siya at a higher cost, or pinaupahan nyo siya, hati po kayong dalawa sa profit. But generally speaking, majority po nang nag add ng co-buyers dito sa Pilipinas is for personal purposes talaga. Lalo na po dito kay First. Based on my experience, parang 98% po ng clients ko dito kay First bumibili ng unit for personal use. And under personal use, the two most common reason po why people add co-buyer is A. Insufficient income ka, meaning kailangan mo ng co-buyer for combined income purposes para ma-reach nyo pong dalawa yung required salary ng loan amount na hinihiram nyo kay banko. Or B, okay naman yung income mo, qualified ka naman, na-reach mo naman yung required salary ni banko. Pero gusto mo lang i-add si co-buyer para uh, dalawa kayong nasa title. Anyway, the idea is, even though madaming consider na factor sila bank bago sila magpautang, one of the main consideration po talaga nila is kung qualified ba yung income mo sa required salary ng amount na hinihiram mo sa kanila. Kasi hindi naman po pwedeng minimum wage ka tapos ang gusto mong utangin sa kanila is worth 10 million pesos. ba Ano pong assurance nila bank na kaya mo silang bayaran ng maayos when the monthly amortization is so much higher than your monthly salary. Paano kapag in-approve ka nila tapos bigla kang nag-default? Loki po si Banko, kahit sabihin natin na sa kanila naman mapupunta yung na-foreclosed na property, naglabas sila sa iyo ng 10 million pesos tapos hindi mo binayaran. And yung na-repossess nilang property, kailangan po nilang ibenta yon below the market value para ma-liquidate agad and maging pera ulit yung property na hindi mo binayaran. So yun po ang reason kaya merong mga parameters or criterias na sinusunod ang mga banks when it comes to approving loans. Having said that, kung hindi po pasok yung income mo sa required salary ni banko, assuming na ito lang po yung concern natin, ha? Insufficient income lang. Wala po kayong adverse record, wala po kayong hit sa CMAP. Anyway, just because hindi mo po na-meet yung required salary ng amount na gusto mong hiramin kay banko, hindi po ibig sabihin na hindi ka na pwedeng mag-apply ng housing loan sa kanila. So we have two options for this that do not involve any transfer of ownership, meaning ikaw pa din yung nakapang Alan sa property, ikaw pa din yung mag a ng loan. Yung first option natin is lakihan na lang po si down payment para lumiit yung balance. Anong advantages ng maliit na balance? Well, number one, mas maliit po na balance or loanable amount means mas mababa din po yung required salary. Vice versa, um, pag mas malaki po yung income mo, mas malaki din po yung amount na pwede mong i-loan. Pangalawa, syempre mas maliit po na loanable amount means mas maliit din po yung amount na merong interest. 
Yes. Again, kung napanood nyo na po yung mga previous vlogs natin, pagka sinabi ko pong down payment, ito po yung walang interest. Kasi diretso pa po kayo nagbabayad kay first or kay developer. And when we say loanable amount, obviously meron na pong bankong involved. So, ito na po yung merong interest. So, ayan po ang first option. Kung let's say, for example, ang standard down payment is 10%, pero kaya nyo naman hanggang 15% or 20%, gawin nyo na. Para eventually, kapag nag-apply na po kayo ng housing loan, mas mataas na po yung chance nyo ma-approve kay bank dahil bumaba na po yung required salary. For our second option, dito na po talaga papasok yung topic natin ngayon, which is pwede po kayong mag-add ng qualified go-buyer. Guys, take note po sa word na qualified. Pag-uusapan natin yan mamaya. But for now, doon po muna tayo sa combined income. For example, ang gusto mo pong unit is Cartland sa Batulao. Gawa natin ng basic computation. Let's say, ang TCP po is 4.6 million. Tapos, nag-down payment ka ng 10%, which is 460,000. So, 4.6 minus 460 equals 4,140,000. Times natin sa 30%, ang total po is 124,200 pesos. Ito po yung required salary natin. Times naman natin siya sa 35%, so 4,140,000 times 0.035 equals 144,900 pesos. Round off natin, 145. So, given our example, kung ang salary mo po is 100,000, kailangan ang kukunin mo pong co-buyer is merong salary na at least 25,000. Para kapag pinagsama po natin yung income nyong dalawa, pasok na po kayo sa required salary ni bank. So, co-owning a property is very advantageous in a sense that tumataas kasi yung chance nyong ma-approve kay bank, especially kapag pareho kayong qualified and pareho kayong maganda yung credit standing. But of course, as enticing as it sounds, um, co-owning a property has its own share of risks and compromises. So let's talk about that. Ito guys, na-mention ko na din naman po kanina, implication number one, both of your names will be reflected sa title. Eh Ma'am Romina, pwede po bang uh, co-buyers kami for combined income purposes, pero pangalan ko lang po yung nasa title. Hindi po. Magkaiba po ang co-buyers at co-borrowers. When we say co-buyers, parehas po kayong owners, parehas kayong pumasa sa evaluation ni banko. And ang assumption po kasi natin dito is dahil nga co-buyers kayo, parehas po kayong nagbabayad ng monthly payments. Kung baga, nagtutulungan po kayong dalawa dun sa financial obligation ng property. So, unfair naman po kung isa lang sa inyong dalawa yung nasa title. So, for reference po, um, pagka sinabing co-borrower, kasama mo siyang mag-apply ng housing loan pero not necessarily kasama din siya sa title. And dito po kay first, for clarification, wala po tayong co-borrower. Co-buyer lang po yung inaalaw natin. The reason being is iniiwa saan po kasi natin magkaroon kayo ng legal disputes or property disputes in a sense that dalawa kayong nagbabayad pero isa lang sa inyong dalawa yung nasa title. Yung second implication po natin guys is both buyers will be evaluated equally. Dahil parehas po kayong buyer or owner, uh, maliban po sa dalawa kayong nasa title, dalawa rin po kayong kailangan pumasa kay banko. Okay? Hindi naman po pwedeng isa lang sa inyo yung qualified. <laughs> Pag gaganon po, let's say for example, parehas mataas yung income nyo. Kaya lang si co-buyer po is may adverse record. For example, may mga tanakbuhan siyang credit cards before. Ang mangyayari is, even though qualified ka, kaya lang dahil may hit po sa CMAP si co-buyer, parehas po kayong ire-reject ni bank sa loan. So, dapat kung kukuha po kayo ng co-buyer, make sure na si co-buyer ay walang adverse record. Third implication, guys, is medyo connected po sa number 2 natin kanina, which is for number 3, lahat po ng kasama sa title is kailangan mag-submit ng complete requirements and kailangan din po mag-sign ng documents. Not just for the loan application na part, but throughout the whole buying process. Talimbawa po, dito kay first, after reservation, nanghihina tayo ng requirements agad, like COE, payslips, proof of billing, etc. So, hindi naman po pwede na si principal buyer lang yung magko-comply. Remember guys, parehas po kayong owner. Siyempre, kung parehas po kayo ng rights, 
dapat parehas din po kayo ng responsibilities. Parehas kayong kailangan mag-sign ng documents not just during the loan application but also kapag gusto nyo ng ibento yung property in the future. Which is actually, if you think about it, for your protection pa ngayon. Kasi for example, dalawa tayong bumili ng bahay. Tapos, bigla akong binenta yung property natin without your consent. Tapos, hindi pa kita hinatian sa profits. So, unfair yun on your part. Pwede mo akong habulin and pwede rin ma-void yung transaction Kasi ang katwiran mo is paano nabenta yung property eh hindi ka naman po mirma. Number four, ang banks po ngayon, which is ganito na po talaga ang ruling ng mga banks after pandemic, ang pinapayagan na lang po nilang maging co-buyer mo for combined income purposes is family member lang. First degree family member, kapatid, parents, or anak. For approval pa, if yung gusto mo maging co-buyer is close relative lang or extended family like pinsan, tito or tita, pamangkin, etc. So, wag po kayo magagalit sa mga developers nyo ha pag hindi nila kayo pinayagan maging co-buyer sa best friend. Kasi hindi naman po ito policy ng mga developers, policy po ito ni Banko kung sino po yung magpapautang sa inyo. Kung gusto nyo po mag-add ng co-buyer for combined income purposes, kailangan po talaga Talaga, si co-buyer is immediate family member. Pero, ay, may drama pa. Pero, kung halimbawa, meron kang gustong maging co-buyer, not for combined income purposes, but wala lang. Gusto mo lang siya maging co-buyer, gusto mo lang siyang kasama sa title. Pwede naman yun. As long as parehas po kayong qualified, meaning wala kayong adverse record dalawa, wala kayong criminal charges, wala kayong mga tinakbuhan na loans, etc. And as long as si principal buyer po ay sufficient income. Meron akong client before na ang romantic partner niya kasi is same gender. So obviously dito po sa Pilipinas, hindi sila pwedeng ikasal. Pero kasi gusto po nila maging co-owners nung binibili nilang property. So what happened was, uh, na-approve sila as co-buyers even though hindi sila family member. Why? Kasi po pareha silang qualified and yung income po ni principal buyer is sobra-sobra pa doon sa required salary ng kinuha nilang unit. Yung last implication natin guys is remember po lahat ng real estate property ay conjugal property. Meaning kung ikaw po ay legally married, automatic po na si spouse ay kasama sa title. Unless of course kayong dalawa po ay nag-sign ng prenup before getting married. Bakit importante ito? Kasi marami pong clients yung nagugulat na akala nila silang dalawa lang ni co-buyer yung kasama sa title. Si principal buyer single siya pero si co-buyer is married. Okay lang naman sana yon as long as number one, kaya pong mag-submit ng requirements ng asawa ni co-buyer and number two, wala po silang marital issues. Dapat alam nyo to guys kasi sabi ko nga po kanina, lahat ng kasama sa title is kailangan qualified. Kung kukuha po kayo ng co-buyer, piliin nyo po yung walang marital issues and yung cooperative po yung spouse niya para hindi kayo ma-stress. Isipin nyo yun, kayo na nga po yung nagbabayad ng property. Tapos po, problemahin nyo pa yung relationship relationship nilang dalawa. <laughs> so, para hindi po kayo ma-stress, pumili po kayo ng co-buyer na walang marital issues. So, that's it for implications. For the risks naman, well, actually, walang masyadong magiging concern dito kasi nga po, sabi ko nga kanina, mahigpit po si Labank and si First pagdating sa co-buyer. Dahil, syempre, pag nag-back out po kayo, lugi sila. But still, ito po yung mga kailangan nyong matandaan before choosing a co-buyer. Number one is changes in relationship. Ito po actually yung reason ni Banco. Kaya as much as possible, ayaw na talaga nila ng co-buyers na hindi family member. Especially for combined income purposes. Number two, kung meron pong marital issues si co-buyer, better po na humanap na lang kayo ng iba pang pwede maging co-owner. And number three, if meron pong nawala sa inyong dalawa. And ito guys, ni-research ko lang din naman ano po. So feel free to correct me if I'm wrong or add po sa comment section but uh, from what I've gathered, hindi po ata automatic na mapupunta yung entire ownership ng property kay surviving co-buyer. Unless A, meron siyang last will and testament. B, si deceased co-buyer po ay asawa mo, syempre conjugal property. 
or C, um, ikaw po yung descendant or tagapagmana ni deceased co-buyer. For example, father mo si co-buyer, tapos ikaw solong anak ka niya. So, automatic, ikaw po yung next of kin niya. So, tapos co-buyer ka pa. So, sa'yo po mapupunta yung, yung ownership ng property. Parang ganon. Again, do your own research po and ni-research ko lang din to. <laughs> Yun lang naman po yung mga naisip ko na risks. So, what should we do if kailangan mo talaga mag-add ng co-buyer para ma-approve ka po sa housing loan? Ang tip ko lang sa inyo guys is only do it with someone that you trust. Or better yet, if makakagawa ka po ng contract, especially if ikaw lang naman talaga yung magbabayad ng property, much better if makakagawa ka po ng memorandum of agreement and have it notarized para talagang legally binding. But again, since majority nga po ng mga nagiging co-buyers dito kay First is uh, magkapatid, mag-ina, or mag-ama, or mag-asawa, um, hindi nyo na po kailangan isipin to. Para lang naman po ito sa mga co-buyers na hindi ganun ka-close. So that's it for our vlog today. I hope may bago po kayong natutunan sa akin ngayon. And if you are interested, please message us on our Facebook page, Messenger, Viber, or WhatsApp number so I can assist you properly and para masendan ko din po kayo ng complete project details and latest na sample computation before tayo mag-schedule ng site tripping. Also, if you like this video, please remember to give me a thumbs up and click that subscribe button kasi starting po next episode, so, gagawa na rin ako ng mga updated versions nung mga vlogs natin nung 2020-2019. So, once again, this is Romina and thank you po for watching. Bye!